Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be showing how to uh, convert the same uh, right back to the RA process library uh, V3.5. Uh, today, we're going to be actually doing a sample project for the sequencer. So, real quick, we'll open up the sequencer. We want to make sure we pick the right application as far as the ME versus the SE. We'll be using the SE version, so we'll go ahead and restore that version. And again, we'll, we'll be getting this done with within the 15 minute period. And uh, so this shows the, the application that we're trying to restore. Make sure you choose restore the factory talk directory to the local application. Do not do the, the factory talk uh, directory, do the application, just like we had selected. <clears throat> okay, so again, this will be done off of RS Logic's uh, emulate uh, 5000 chassis. So now we're going to go ahead and open our program. So this is uh, created on version 18. I do not have 18. So uh, I have several versions under that and above that. So what it's going to do is going to prompt me to actually change the controller, which is fine because I'm going to go ahead and change it to an emulator anyway. I'm going to change it to version 20 and I'm going to go ahead and let it make the, the uh, actual program. So as it's making the program, it's converting everything over. Um, it quickly did that. Uh, I will say that <laughs> it worked pretty quick. Make sure you note that the processor, the, the slot you're in, down here in the very bottom of the I.O. tree. So being that we have our emulator open already, we're going to go ahead and go online or one of our not going online but download we're going to choose our AB uh, underscore VBP which is our virtual backplane or we know we know we're in slot 2 so we want to download now as soon as it downloads and everything's fine you have no errors or uh, nothing of that nature pops up then you should be fine to proceed uh, I don't foresee anything this is uh, perfected code by Rotwell so you shouldn't have any issues. Again this is sample code they have so uh, you should just have warnings and no errors. Warnings are fine. Uh, so we're online. We have no faults. Uh, we'll minimize that. We'll open up uh, the Factory Talk Studio. We have restored it, so make sure that you know that we restored it to a uh, view site edition local station. We did not do a uh, view site edition network distributed or a network station. We did the local station. Go ahead and choose that. And in the local station, it's going to pull up, and so we want to uh, select the application that we just restored. So we restored the, the sample sequencer. And as it restores, um, it's going to synchronize and everything. It's going to go through its motions. Um, basically, everything's going to come up. Uh, now, there's a couple of key factors in this uh, that you need to look at. So first and foremost, right-click uh, your RS Links Enterprise. As far as alarms and events, and you're not using any, just verify that. Go to uh, communication setup. You'll see that your shortcut's already in there. What you need to do is set up your shortcut for whatever path you're on. In our case, we're using the 1789, um, which is the virtual pack plane. We're in slot two. We'll click apply. Make sure you have that highlighted. Click apply. And then at the very bottom, we want to verify. So all you're doing in verifying is making sure that the shortcut took. So at that point we click OK. So we have our tags matching up. We currently have our, our uh, shortcut matching up with our tags and our tags matching up with our controller. Um, this time uh, you want to go ahead and double check your runtime security. In runtime security, um, most of the time you're going to have uh, a bunch of scenarios where you, you just none of this is valid right 
So what you want to do is you want to first and foremost, you want to make sure you have a an account down here uh, that you can sign into. Uh, in my case, I'm an administrator, so I do have an account. If you don't, just right click, add new, uh, new user group, and then so you know add an account. Um, so in this instance, we'll go ahead and click uh, security accounts. We'll add new. Uh, again, I'm, I'm the administrator, so I'm going to select administrator, click OK. Uh, it's going to come up and, and say, you know, that they can't find the rest of these. All it's going to do is, if you hit OK, it's going to delete them. So just go ahead and, and uh, auto-delete the, the rest of these. It'll come up and it'll have exactly what you have. If you need to add another one, you can. You can come up here and add another one. Um, it's complete that you can just do users, uh, show all, depends on what you need to do. In our case, we're done. Uh, we have administrators, so I should be able to sign in. Make sure you close it out, you hit save changes. At this point, we want to go ahead and launch a client. Um, we want to make a new one. So this would be sample sequencer. And I'm going to always put client on the end of it so that I know exactly what I'm making. It's going in the client folder, but I definitely just want to make sure that it, it indicates that it's client. So you want to make sure when you select at the next stage, you're selecting the application that you're currently trying to make the client for. Um, this is not a network distributed nor a network station. It's a local station. So we click next, come down here, and we choose the uh, application that we restored, which is this uh, sample sequencer. In the next stage, um, I believe again, once we're using the, uh, we may not be using macros on this one. So uh, the initial display is the main. Uh, we don't have any client keys. We don't have, uh, I guess we could put, I, I don't think the startup I don't think there's anything for startup so we'll leave that alone we'll click next uh, we'll click maximize and we'll go ahead and start the application <clears throat> now it's initializing and then it should go into uh, login if you did not put in your login information into the runtime security it will not log in so you may have to stop it and and go back and put that in. So at this point, it's starting an application. And as soon as it starts, it should come up to the main screen, which just basically shows you the sequencer. Um, this is again just uh, basically a, a sequencer itself, not necessarily anything. Um, you know very complicated but what you want to do is so in this instance uh, you can you can actually start it and see the sequencer running so what you would normally do is you would use this with in conjunction with something else um, but this is uh, in, an instance where it shows you just how the sequencer works you know what it's looking for um, and currently we have a prompt that says welcome to sequencer so just click OK um, and then it continues on down so you can force stuff you can step it through um, come in and so I said this is midway through the sequencer click OK so it's basically they have it prompting, prompting you to see how it, it steps through systems um, and steps through uh, the sequence. You can also stop it if you needed to, uh, but if you're just stepping through, uh, basically that's it. Yeah, so it shows that process is complete. So we'll come into the, uh, the sequencer branching one. So this is just showing you different ways to uh, go about it and how to use it. Just make sure you go down and, and Click the uh, the uh, navigation right here, and, and you can see exactly how it steps through. 
what it's waiting on. Um, you can go into configuration and see how things are set up and see how things are doing. So you could actually go into um, the engineering mode up here and click the configuration and see exactly how uh, things are set up as far as you know as, as uh, the sequencer goes. So you could kind of come down here and scroll down to whatever whatever you wanted to look at and see exactly what it was. So kind of give you a little bit of a indication of like uh, what comes on and what cuts off. You can you know come in here and, and name different things. You can type in a name, you know, what, whatever you wanted to. Um, but again, this is just the uh, like a simple sequencer. Um, you can throw the simple sequencer into program mode, operator mode. Um, you can do whatever you want to as far as uh, it's pretty versatile. Um, it's, you know, different to set up at first, but once you get it set up, it works pretty good. So this is showing you that you can prompt somebody to to jump to the next step and it continues and you can you can actually that that's what the, the purpose of having this screen is you can kind of see it changing states and seeing what it's doing and then basically we're just waiting on the next prompt so uh, you can jump back um, or you can go to the next step in our case we'll go to the next step step through it and you can kind of see the way that you know everything transpires and then we're finished so um, with that said let's pull up the code and look at that so uh, pulling up the code looks you know basically like this you can come in and, and, and kind of decipher what you want you know as you're running it um, or even set up your own if you, you would like to. Um, this just kind of shows you uh, the way it's laid out, um, how things are done, like the sequencer itself. Um, this is the, the P sequencer. This is just one function block. Uh, it's pretty elaborate though. Uh, and then there's a, a different sequencer. You can use it in ladder logic as well. So um, in this one, uh, we can use the scaling one. So let's close this branch out and then start the scaling one and then go and, and view it while it's running. So in this instance, we're looking at the P sequencer, uh, sequencer scaling example. So we could come in and look at the sequencer scaling display. Uh, you could actually look at, at what's happening. You can't really, I mean, you kind of just see that well, that says it's idle right now, so it's running, so we might not be in the right one. Yeah, so uh, as far as that goes, it might be this one right here. Which, yeah, it's this one right here. So there is actually, I mean, you could tie stuff into this um, and have it running, but uh, for the most part, this is a front-end system. So it basically, you would, if you had to change something, you would come in here and change it in this portion. And, you know, you come in here. So if you want to change the wait times, you want to change uh, just different things that come on, hold, interlocks, uh, resets, um, configurations. Uh, you can come in here and just do multiple things. I mean, it, it really depends inputs, outputs, uh, whatever you want it to cut on, cut off. Um, it really is, is a pretty versatile system um, as far as that goes. Uh, I just want kind of to show exactly, you know, what this thing, what the sequencers can do, right? They're all basically the same. They have the home tab, the maintenance tab, the engineering tab, diagnostics, and then alarms. Um, so uh, over here you have you know you display the configuration you have your operations you can go into op uh, program operator uh, i believe there's a maintenance mode too down here you can display the steps the configuration um, and you can you can always choose and, and change different things in here as well so um, 
I just wanted to highlight how that's work, how that works. Um, the grand, this is a small application, but it's meant to work with a major, with a bigger, um, a bigger system. But the, the whole premise of it is you can go ahead and within 15 minutes, you can get this running, get it working and see exactly how this stuff is set up. Um, so uh, I will say that you, know, you don't have the ability to look at the, uh, you have the ability to look at the steps and stuff like that, but you don't have the ability to, so you can kind of look at the way it's configured, but you don't have the ability to open up the instruction logic like you would normally. Um, so if, if this is something that, you know, interests you or something like that, you can go ahead and reestablish this, uh, like, you know, re uh, make the, the program emulated. You can uh, run the HMI, and we what well, what I'll probably do is I'll probably add this to like a, a bigger application, and uh, give you a bigger illustration of, of how this works. But um, again, this is the basic batching system, like a sequencer. Uh, you can use it for batching. You can use it for just about just anything really. Uh, but it's a simple sequencer, so it's very versatile. On, on how you use it, and it's a, made, made to be a front-end system. So again, um, this was just another uh, another one of the uh, process objects or process uh, library of the, the V3.5, and this was the sequencer version. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that one and uh, show you how easy and quick it is to, to take the code that Rockwell gives you and, and make it work and kind of at that point you can kind of play with it and see what it does. Um, if you again, if you'd like to see more of this or different different elements of this, uh, just let me know. If you want to break break down the sequencer or have any questions about the the simple sequencer, just leave me a comment below, and um, you know I'll go ahead and and you know make another video or uh, address that. So again, thank you for your time, and uh, I look forward to hearing your your comments.